Hello guys and welcome back to Waveland Park. It's been a while, I shouldn't have kept you waiting, but I'm here now. Well, I guess we talked about Britney the last episode. We won't do that again. Yeah, um, it's been quite a while. So much has happened in the park in the meantime. As you can see, we have some of these planting aisles here and um, yeah, I did some decoration on the outside or besides uh, the Penguin Bay habitat. And in this episode, we're taking the next big step to our goal to build some kind of a sea worldish park here. We are going to build the polar zone. Yeah, um, first of all, we have to build a huge building because we want to house the king penguins. And the king penguins don't like the tropical environment that we are having our park in. So we have to build a house for them where it's cool and I almost said cozy, but no, they don't want it cozy. They want it cold. They want it freezing. They want it uncomfortable. They want ice. They want water. And yeah, we're going to give them all of that in this building. Um, yeah, as I said in the beginning, um, it's been a quite a while since the last video. It's been two weeks, I guess, um, since the last video. And I think this is going to be the pace that I'm going with, um, with this park. Because as you can see, or as you already saw from the beginning, from the build of this park, this is such a massive build and um, such a detailed build that takes me quite a while to come up with some things. Um, first of all, I have to, uh, yeah, I have to get new ideas of what I want to build. And um, second to that, I need the time to bring that to life and not just build a simple habitat, but um, yeah build something quite uncomfortable to build. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, that's why these builds take a lot more time than my usual stuff. And that's why I think there's only going to be an episode, a new episode every two weeks from now on. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking of what I wanted to say usually because I brought myself out of the concept once again. Um, as you saw, um, I wanted to show you in this video how to build some kind of a dome or a round shaped building. So I let the complete part of that in the video. So um, what you only have to do um, that makes that very easy is just build one side of a wall. How you want to look, uh, how you want your building to look. Um, use that, copy that around, um, connect it to a building, and then copy it again and uh, use some kind of an angle. I always use the 45 degree angle and circulate it around. And uh, that's how you create a dome in the end. It's pretty simple and pretty effective, just. Yeah, just be creative with creating this one single wall of your building and you can build, um, yeah, really amazing and stunning things. <clears throat> yeah, the next thing that I was going to do, um, and this was my fourth attempt to build the polar zone, I, um, I have to admit, I built it a lot of times and I never was really satisfied with what I was doing. Um, the inspiration I had usually for that build was the Oceanographic in Valencia. I think I told you that in the last episode. I wanted to come up with a build that looks uh, yeah, that looks somehow like the buildings um, in there but I just wasn't able, I couldn't manage to make it look like that and everything I came up with and everything I built was just meh. And um, so I decided to delete it again and build it anew, it was again meh. And I deleted it again and built it anew and it was meh. And yeah, 
in the end, we end up with this build here that I'm quite satisfied with. So what I wanted here on the outside, and that is why I left that spot open, is I wanted to have something that is not, um, yeah, completely the same around the whole building. I wanted to have some kind of a glass feature in uh, in the front of the building where our visitors might uh, will enter the polar zone later on. And um, so I shaped this wavy kind of window in the front of the building um, that you could see right before. And um, uh, yeah, did that with the two-sided glass so that we can see yeah, we, we have a clear view from the inside to the outside of the building, but when you are standing outside, you can only catch a glimpse of what is going to be awaiting you on the inside. And as you can see right here, I also deleted the whole path that I was laying out in the episode before because it didn't work the way I wanted it to work and it is a lot more easier or at least it was a lot more easier for me to build the path anew when the yeah when the structure of the building was there and I exactly knew where I wanted the path to be and also if I had yeah if I had kept the path that I had in the, the building um, the habitat for the king pengu uh, penguins would have been way too small. So um, yeah, that's why I decided to do it again. Um, even though um, the habitat might look really big, it it is really big in my opinion. Well, it is uh, it is smaller. It is way smaller than the habitat for the African penguins. Um, yeah, even though it looks very big, it is too small for our penguins. And that is why I had to choose again um, the option that we don't have to fulfill all our animal needs. And that is pretty sad because I always look, um, even in my sandbox builds, that I fulfill all the needs of the animals. But um, yeah, it was just not possible for this build here because I wanted to have a huge group of king penguins in the habitat and that wouldn't have been possible if I kept the option. Yeah, so what was I doing in the background? That is something that I saw from another builder um, from a German Facebook group um, that is building amazing aquariums uh, using a lot of mods, of course. Um, what I'm not doing um, he uses those billboards and um, uploads some custom photos or um, yeah, some downloaded photos or wallpapers from nature scenes, puts them on the billboards and uses that as a backdrop for the habitat. And that is what I wanted to do for the penguin habitat as well. So I downloaded some pictures of Antarctic um, landscape and put it on two. Um, in the beginning you saw me um, putting in one of the hugest, um, I think it's the 32 meter billboard. Um, that was way too big so I decided I go with the smaller ones with the 16 meter billboards and I put in two of them close to each other. So we have this um, yeah, in the middle where both touch each other, we have this not so nice uh, thing going on. But um, when I am done with landscaping and we're putting down these snowy rocks all around there, you won't reckon, uh, you won't uh, notice that anymore. So um, yeah, that's totally fine, I guess. <clears throat> Here you can see you almost don't see where those two billboards touch in the middle. And when the, uh, when the whole habitat and the whole building is finished, you uh, definitely don't see anything of that anymore. 
Yeah, I also put down some of the concrete pieces on the floor of the pool for the penguins. Um, on the left side of the building, um, as you could see, we have a little bit of an indoor section for the African penguins. Um, that wasn't planned in the beginning. But um, yeah, it turned out when I put down the building that um, we would have a little bit of the water feature and also a little bit of the land feature inside the building um, from the, um, yeah, a little bit of the land and water feature from the African penguins in the building. And so I thought, yeah, that would be nice and it's not too boring if we only have one kind of animal in the building. So um, yeah why not go with that and have also a little bit of space for the African penguin in there. That also gives the whole thing a little bit of contrast because they live in a completely different environment than the king penguins do. And so, yeah, that was, yeah, that came in very handy. Um, what I'm building right now, as you have noticed, um, as you might have noticed, we don't have a roof yet um, for our building. So I wanted to have a glass roof because I wanted to have a lot of light in there, but not everywhere in the building. So I wanted to have a small kind of a glass roof. Um, right over the habitat for the king penguins and also a little bit over the habitat uh, for the African penguins and uh, at that part where we have our visitors walking around the habitat um, I wanted it to be yeah, a little bit um, darker so that you have this nice contrast you stand in the dark and you look into the light um, yeah sounds a little bit creepy i guess but um yeah that's what i wanted to have and that's what i'm going to build right here right now and um as you know me or as you know some of my builds already uh, and you already might have seen as well the build for the uh, for the elephant house in my arizona adventure park um, I am a huge fan of building some uh, asymmetric buildings. Symmetry is a very cool thing and asymmetry is, yeah, very, very much cooler. <laughs> so that is what I wanted to do here as well. So um, that is why, um, you might see that in a minute, why I didn't put the glass roof in the middle or in the center of the building. So here once again you can see how to build domes. Just copy it around and rotate it and copy and rotate and yeah here we are the glass roof is finished and we are putting it asymmetric on the building on the top of the building so that we have a lot of light over the habitat for the king penguins but almost no light on the path for our visitors yeah and um that was quite painful and took a lot of time when i was building the roof uh, because I had to do it for every single angle and piece by piece so that it all came together and that it all fitted not not only the vibe but uh, also the pieces did fit together and didn't look yeah didn't didn't look some kind of weird <coughs> sorry yeah, so the next part was um, I put the barriers on the right height. So I, I didn't want the habitat to be kind of open. Um, first of all, because our king penguins need very, very co uh, cool temperatures. And so if we had the whole thing open towards our visitors, um, it would be quite difficult to keep the temperature in the habitat. So I thought it would make sense to close the whole thing up. 
wasn't quite consequent with that because we did only close it up towards visitors but not towards the backstage area where we have our keepers that um, go into the habitat to feed our animals and clean the habitat yeah and um, yeah to close it up i also used again the concrete pieces to close the gaps here first of all i did think i wanted to close the windows from the king penguins towards the african penguins um, yeah, in the end it turned out that I wasn't very happy with how that looked and it uh, made the whole thing look uh, very much darker than I wanted it to be. So I decided to get rid of it again and um, leave, uh, yeah, leave it open. Um, yeah, leave it open, but I um, chose to have the two-sided glass or the one-sided glass, is it two-sided, one-sided, uh, you know what I mean, where one animal can look in the habitat of the other animal, uh, <laughs> one animal can look in the habitat of the other animal, but um, yeah, not the same time around. So I guess I chose that the African penguins can look into the habitat of the king penguins, but uh, the king penguins can't look into the habitat of the African penguins, I guess. I'm not, I'm not pretty sure, but we uh, will see that in the end. Um, yeah, and um, it goes pretty fast because I cut a lot of stuff out. I did some decoration for the inside. Um, first of all, I built those walls for, um, yeah, so that we have a little bit of... Um, I just can't find the word once again um, so that we have a little bit of a distance from the upper part of the house and the down part of uh, of the house so i decided i wanted to have some kind of a wall in there so that our visitors would uh, be very um, very curious where uh, or very very excited to go down to see the penguins or to see the penguins underwater and um, yeah so I built that wall and um, as I built that I had to do some decoration on the other side because those blank concrete uh, those blank and gray concrete walls looked a little bit um, yeah a little bit 60s 80s or something like that and um, so I had to do something about that. That was why I built a lot of these um, rocks um, that I covered with the snowy rocks and put down some penguin statues and also the polar bear um, and uh, did a lot of education boards that you might see later as well. And um, what came out as a pretty nice idea was um, those windows that you see me making here because that um, yeah those windows soften the whole thing up and give the visitors a nice view into the habitat or at least some kind of a glimpse um, to the habitat so that they can see what they can await when they go downstairs. Yeah, as I said, I built a lot of um, custom billboards, custom education boards um, uh, with some real information so I decided I wanted to have something like um, as we can see in the in the end when I do a little bit uh, of a tour uh, in the house um, about um, uh, penguins all around the world where they live how they look um, what they eat um, which animals prey on them and um, also some little parts of um, climate change. And what I found very interesting and what many of you guys might not know, there's also some penguin, uh, penguins in the jungle. Um, yeah, <laughs> I just can't tell you right now um, what they are named, but we might see it later when we take a tour um, through the 
polar zone because I made a custom medication board and uh, talking about these penguins I almost said uh, they are called the Liechtenstein penguins but uh, no that's not correct um, they have a name that sounds like that or uh, <laughs> or might be a little bit related to a Liechtenstein or whatever but um, yeah I'm not quite sure how uh, how they are called but they do live in the jungle so um, most people always think that uh, penguins are only living in the arctic or in cold environments but uh, also the african penguin um, that's not correct for the african penguin because the african penguin lives in south africa um, where it's not that cold well in the african winter it's also cold in south africa but not that cold as we know it in, uh, in Europe or in America um, yeah and there's also some uh, penguins in Australia um, I talked about it I think in uh, in one of my German series in Swamp Lake Sioux I guess um, and that also sometimes some of the king penguins um, land on the coast of uh, of australia because uh, australia you might not know that but australia is very close to the south pole and sometimes um, penguins uh, yeah um, choose the wrong way or something like that and um, uh, end up in australia on the coast somewhere um, most of the times very very exhausted and hungry and more dead than alive but uh, so that um, people in Australia have to take care of them and bring them back again yeah that happens um, because uh, with king penguins it's uh, they don't build nests like uh, like the African penguins does um, um, yeah if you have seen the the uh, the movie happy feet you might know that king penguins um the females lay the eggs and they balance them on their feet and um sit on them so that the egg doesn't touch the ground if it would touch the ground um, so uh, if it would touch the ice um, it would be possible that uh, yeah that the little penguin in the egg would die within a few seconds so um, the female penguin sits on the egg or is it the male penguin i um, i just don't know they switch parts from time to time so they have to um, yeah they have to make it possible to change the positions without the egg touching the ground which is um, yeah which is very difficult because as you know penguins don't have hands so they have to balance the whole thing with their feet and yeah that's not easy so it's uh, yeah it's quite uh, quite interesting to look at that um, if you um, yeah maybe you have seen it in a in a documentary uh, movie or something like that already yep um, here are the education boards that I was talking about that I was building unfortunately we didn't catch a glimpse of the education board that I was talking about yeah but um, and to come back to what I wanted to say in the beginning um, uh, as I told you that I was uh, putting down the polar bear statue um, as many of you guys might know penguins and polar bears don't meet so that was why I also made a education board where I talked about um, didn't talk about but uh, the theme of it was that penguins and polar bears don't meet and why they don't meet because the penguins live on the south pole and the polar bears live on the north pole and everywhere else where penguins live there's no polar bears so polar bears usually don't eat penguins but um, yeah here was a short glimpse at the education board with the animals that prey on the penguins which uh, would be orcas 
or uh, also leopard seals or um, also big uh, big birds I don't know their name in um, in English but um, they almost look like uh, like an albatross or uh, a huge seagull and um, they feed on the pe uh, on the penguins or at least at the uh, little babies of the penguins and the eggs yeah so where are uh, where are we here um yeah as you can already see decoration is almost done in here i had this huge wall in the background where i had to do something with it and it was not that easy and it was quite hard for me to come up with an idea what i wanted to do um, in the end i just put down some more of these rocks and also those um, snow rocks and um, then uh, some penguins on top of it and then I had an idea. I wanted it to look a little bit like a museum so I put in another wall, another glass wall so um, yeah that it looks like um, yeah like in a muse museum and um, also some education boards in between and um, And I used an in-game blueprint for the very first time ever. And I really mean ever. Since I bought the game, I never used any of those in-game blueprints. Um, prove me wrong if I'm lying to you right now. If I ever made a video where I used something like that, but I, uh, I'm pretty sure that I never did that. But in this episode, I, um, yeah, I just couldn't come up with something that I could put in here as a decoration for, uh, for an Arctic feature. I just didn't know what to do. I mean, you can't work with plants in here. Well, I did here in the background for the African penguins on that side, but you can't put plants in there for the king penguin. Um, and so I decided I go with the blueprint for the shipwreck um, that we got in the Arctic DLC. I, yeah, it was the Arctic DLC. And I used that and um, deleted a lot of stuff that was um, looking outside of the building. And um, yeah, it fits in there pretty, pretty nice and um, it looks pretty good and gives the whole thing really some kind of a museum vibe. And I really do like that. So usually that's not something that I'm supposed to do. Um, not something that I'm going to do because I always like to build stuff myself. Um, especially when I do videos for you guys, because I think you're not that much interested in me putting down some uh, already prepared stuff. You want to see how things get created and um, you want to see how I come up with some, some ideas, I guess. And so, um, yeah, that's not something that I do usually and that's something I'm not going to do that often. But in this case, um, yeah it came together pretty nice and i think i think you guys like it as well yeah and so as i am finishing the polar zone in here uh, i am thinking about the next steps that we are going to do in our park I am thinking of not having a new habitat in the next episode maybe because I wanted to make sure that the outside here uh, around Penguin Bay and the polar zone might look nice and make sense and so I was thinking about having maybe another restaurant um, on the upper level here so that the whole area is a little bit more connected and um, yeah so that we have a nice uh, yes yeah, some kind of a nice plaza in here as well 
that connects this area with the next part that is going to be the river's edge. And I also wanted to have something like a water playground for, for the children in here that would also be very, very nice and uh, make a lot of sense, I think. So if you have any ideas what else I could do in here and what else you might see in some kind of a sea worldish park, um, just let me know in the comment section because um, yeah I think there would be many things that I'm not thinking about um, especially because I am from Germany I'm not uh, from America and um, even though I I've been there quite um, some time and um, also I'm, I'm going there again in October um, I'm not too familiar with things that you usually see in an American amusement park or um, a SeaWorld or something like that. Um, also, if there's uh, some of you guys from America, I would be very, very much interested in uh, what SeaWorld parks look there right now, because I think I heard that they are not longer allowed to keep uh, killer whales if that is correct and um, so I was thinking uh, what are they going to do do they still uh, have the right to keep dolphins I guess that's uh, very common and um, yeah um, the last time I've been to SeaWorld in Orlando is about I think it's more than 10 years ago it's more than 10 years ago and it was um, shortly after the um, uh, infamous incident with uh, with Telecom in um, in Orlando because the yeah because the staff of SeaWorld weren't allowed to do shows um, with uh, with the killer whales anymore so uh, shows were running but they weren't allowed to go into the water with the whales anymore and that was very um, yeah that was very new i guess and um, yeah just just uh, i'm just curious how sea world works since uh, since that and what has changed for the better or for the worst so if you know something about that just let me know in the comments because um, yeah I'm very curious about that okay so our penguins already moved in I guess the roof is also finished in the meantime um, I just had to put in some animal um, enrichment items and um, also I had to do some work on the outside of the building because I didn't want to look at uh, to have it looking that plain so I put down some of these uh, concrete pieces again um, and also put uh, put in some flowers again some flowers some palm trees and yeah um, yeah, and after that's been done, I'm already done with the whole building. This building took me about... Um, I recorded six hours of building. I also did some breaks in recording because I didn't record all the stuff. Um, so I was building on this for about eight to ten hours, I guess. So um, yeah, as you can see, that's uh, that's quite some time that it took me, and it's quite a massive build. Um, yeah, and I'm very happy how it turned out. And I guess it's time for you guys to have a look at it. So let's take a little tour into the polar zone. And with that being said, um, as we are at the end of the video. Leave a like if you liked what you saw. Leave a comment if you want uh, to tell me something, if you want something to know and if you want to tell me how SeaWorld is looking right now. And um, most important, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future episodes.
Okay, but now let's have a look at the polar zone. First of all, here we have the pool for our African penguins. You might have seen one in the background on the island. And here's the big pool for our king penguins. One is already swimming and so here's the education board with the penguins from all around the world. Yeah, already two are in the water and the rest is coming as well. So I made these animal informations as well um, as I did with the flamingos. I just love the look of the whole thing. Here's the predators on the hunt that I was telling you about. Here on the right side, food of the penguins. And here on the upper level you can have a look at the penguins when they are on the glacier. Yeah, I also put in those um, mesh fence pieces because I wanted the whole thing to be able to be closed. So uh, maybe there's uh, the penguins need some uh, calm or something like that. So you could close the whole underwater area so that the visitors couldn't go in. Yeah, some toilets in here, very important. And once again, some uh, more education boards. Here's the windows on the right side. Those palm trees are because of the penguins um, that live in the jungle. Yeah, that I didn't have a look at the education board. Well, <laughs> that's uh, very interesting. Okay, hmm. I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave it in the video description and tell you the name of the penguins that live in the jungle. Yeah, and here is the boat. And here you can see the mesh fence as well. Yeah, and with that, we're at the end of the video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked it. Take care, and I hope to see you in the next video again. Bye. Oh, and here's a look at the nighttime. <laughs> so. Bye, guys.